Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and I have just been on a perennial midsummer shopping spree and look at these fantastic plants that I've just bought and I can't wait to share them all with you. All of these are perfectly hardy, really good garden plants and I'm very excited about the mix of textures and colours that I have here. So let's have a look at the plants. You are very welcome to the video and if you're new here then welcome to the channel. I'm Rachel and Duensa Garden is my garden where I grow a lot of perennial plants and just as a little precursor to let you know that my garden in Ireland is I suppose we don't have hardiness zones here but it roughly equates to US hardiness zone 9 Having said that, generally speaking, we wouldn't have as warm a summer as Zone 9 might suggest and our winters would tend to be wetter. So it goes. Anyway, okay, let's have a look at these fantastic plants that I have. And the first one that I need to draw your attention to is this fantastic Delphinium. And Delphiniums I absolutely absolutely love but you have to look out for the good ones because a lot of them are raised from seed and in fact the ones I have grown in the past have been seed grown ones that I've done myself but you need to look out for a couple of things look out for the size of the flowers compared to the stem so you don't want a delphinium that has a stem with gaps that you can see and what I mean by that is that you can see the flowers and then you see the stem through the gaps where the flowers don't quite reach you want something like this that is really packed with flowers and this is fantastic my delphiniums did so so well this year I just feel they have a little space for a new addition so this one is going to go in there okay so the next thing I want to tell you about is this one here and you may be puzzling as to why I am showing you a strawberry plant but it's not a strawberry plant at all it's a potentilla and it's a perennial potentilla which has the foliage that very much resembles strawberries and it has these glorious red flowers now I didn't buy this today I bought it a few days ago so <laughs> the flowers are beginning to go over but it has gorgeous scarlet flowers and I love love red and I love potentillas so this is going to make a happy addition to the ones I have dotted around my garden. So what have we got next? Oh my gosh, yes, Nepeta. Nepeta. Now, Nepeta or cat mint is much loved by cats, but apparently cats can be fussy. Who knew? And you need to choose one that suits your particular cat. Now, this particular one is called Walker's Low and my plan is to plant it in front of my new greenhouse so that every time I go in and come out I can just take a little bit of the foliage even squish it between my fingers and just smell it because it smells absolutely lovely and of course in my climate I don't know the cat has arrived Katsuki I'm, she must be tempted by the <laughs> the walkers low anyway in my climate Lavender doesn't do great, but Nepeta certainly does. So I am very happy to grow this. All right, so that's the next one. Okay, what have we got next? Aha. This I have been looking for for a while. And look at it. Look, look, look. So this, you may think, is a succulent. And certainly the leaves feel very succulent. It produces gorgeous gorgeous sprays of blue flowers in spring and this is called the Chatham Island forget-me-not so it's a plant from Chatham Island which is off of New Zealand and the great news because a lot of the New Zealand island plants aren't hardy but this one is definitely hardy and I know because I grew it for absolute years and it did really well for me always flowered always looked fantastic and then I 
<laughs> I didn't tend to my Darmera and my Darmera overcame it and squeezed it out. So it's time to get a new plant and I know exactly where that's going. Not beside the Darmera though. Okay, so that's that one. Next up we have a Campanula and yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going through a bit of an old blue thing at the moment, which I would never have thought. I thought I'd be more an orange and red person, but this really struck me. And I have a white Campanula that flowers for a very, very long time. And I'm just hoping that this blue Campanula will flower for as long as the white one does, because if it does, then that's just amazing. Okay, so I have some taller plants at the back that I will show you now. And here we have Thalictrum Hewlett's Double. And this produces a really, really tall stem and sprays of blue and white double flowers on top. And it is generally thought to be the best tall Thalictrum. Of course, different people like different things, but this is one that I've wanted for a good while. It's, it's quite commonly available, but somehow I didn't have it. So, well, we had to fix that, didn't we? Gorgeous thing. And the great thing about it is though, although it's very tall, it's not dense. So you can have it, you know, like in the middle of your border, cause you can see through it. It's not gonna block the vision of anything else behind. And if you're wondering what the Thalictrum looks like, I can't show you because it's not in flower yet. But what I can show you is this other Thalictrum here behind me. And this is Thalictrum delavae, which I grew from seed many years ago. And it's also lovely, lovely and airy and light. And you know, you've got these spires of flowers up above everything else. And who is double is like that, but on steroids. We have a Hellenium, and this is a Sahan's early flower, uh, one that's supposed to flower for a very long time. Now this was bought before, so it's, <laughs> it's wanting in terms of water. And I just have to tell you, we are having an exceptionally hot summer here in Ireland at the moment. It's at 30 degrees centigrade on some days. We wouldn't be used to this at all. And anyway, so my plants in waiting have suffered just a little bit. And let me just illustrate that with this plant here. So this used to be a beautiful geum in full flower. And I went away for three days watering it before I left. And when I came back, yeah. This is what I was left with. Now it'll probably come back. I, I've cut it back and James, they, they, it will bounce back if I keep it well hydrated. But it's just so, so hot this year for reasons unknown to us that uh, climate change, I suppose, that you really just need to keep a very, very close eye on your plants. Okay, what else do I have back here? Did I mention I had a, a bit of a blue thing going on at the moment? And um, I. I love this Nautia. It's just so soft and flouncy and nothing harsh about the colours at all. I have not grown this one before, but it, I've grown Nautia and it, it, it's a good plant. Really pleased about this. And then finally, finally, we have a really, really tall plant and this is a Diasia. Now we generally know diaceas as small plants for the front of a border that are tender and die over winter. But this one, this one is hardy and this is Diasia personata and it has exactly the same flowers as the small variety, but it's tall so you can put it at the back of a border. And I've grown this in my garden for several years. <laughs> I will be dividing my clump in spring, my existing clump, but I want it more because it is such, such, such a good plant. Isn't that super? And this flowers for a really long time, really for all summer long. So it's definitely one that's worth having. Okay, so these were my new perennial plants. I hope you like them and 
I hope you'll check back to see where I end up planting these beauties in my garden. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Bye! Thank you.